Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. A um, couple of things before we go into this next, this video. Um, I want to talk about the a couple of things I missed. I didn't really talk about. One was the uh, defrost ducting right here, and also uh, a component on the heater box that I overlooked. I didn't cover it, so. I'll bring you in and we'll talk about the ducting and we'll go to the heater box. Alright, uh, the heater ducting or the defrost ducting. There's uh, two ducts on the dash, one on each side of the speaker housing. And here's what the ducting looks like right here. And I have to say this ducting is in very, very good shape. It's not hard, it's not brittle, it's very soft and pliable. And it has these types of... Uh, clamps on them. Now the only thing with these clamps is the more you use them the good chance you'll break them off. So I only opened them and left them open for now. That one I didn't even open much. I just left it. And I had them all bag and tagged but I dug them back out for this. So that's the, the one thing is that they're uh, you know the two ducting that have to come off for the dash to come off. So now let's go over and check out the heater box and uh, you'll see where those two ductings go in in or come out of actually they're joined to that and the air comes out of them up to the dash this is the uh, fan speed resistor it uh, by through resistance wires and I believe this one's a wire one it'll change the voltage going to for the fan speeds and there should be three three speeds on that and then you have the hole where the the fan is mounted and that's internal, that fan, it's all internal. So, and then the, the heater core is here and it's on a bit of an angle. So this hole here will pull, will pull cold, you'll, the fan will pull, pull cool air in. And uh, if you want heat, you'll have your uh, blend door adjusted so it's on the heat, whichever way that is. I'm not 100% sure on this one. And if you need defrost, this blend door or the defrost door right here, you can open and close it and it'll redirect the warm air because it's on this it's on this side of the heater core now all this stuff is that puts the warm air through and then here you'll see the discharge for the floor ducts there's the ones tucked underneath there and that's where the air the warm air can go through there and this big one over here is to allow fresh air to come in so it says it'll come through here and you can either allow it to go right down into the car or go through the or it'll get pulled through the heater core and get warmed up let's continue on with uh, getting rid of this stuff over here in this area well they're focusing all the brake pedal mounts and the and then that kind of thing <clears throat> see this screw needs to go with the heater yeah and then I'll be taking out uh, as well I'm gonna stop this video will stop when I get to this point right here next video after this one will be right back but for today for, the, for this video, the remainder of this video, we'll be getting rid of all the stuff. I want a bare firewall, and that includes the, includes the insulation. I haven't taken it off before, but I do see looks to be a couple of push pins there. So I'll try to I'll get my body removal tools. And then uh, I'm going to leave the carpet till this is all done, because it's a heck of a lot easier on the knees working in there with the carpet than it is without the carpet. And I'm going to mention that the rear floors is, are, are solid in this car, or they feel solid. And I have looked at them from underneath. They look solid. I mean, given the year, I mean, solid is. But they don't, they don't appear to have any rust holes. Now, I could find some. But the front, on both sides, someone had already done a patchwork on it. So anyway, let's get at her. Now... We're going after this brake mount, or the pedal, where the pedal mounts on to the 
to hold it all to the chassis. So I just want to go over the bolts. Uh, there's three up here. Sorry. One, two, three. And they're half inch. Quite sure they're half inch. Let's try it. I'm sure they are. Yep, half inch. And there's two bolts or two nuts here with bolts that go through to a plate on the other side of the firewall on the outside and there's also two uh, between in here there's nothing on that side it's just on in the middle here and there's the brake the master shoulder arm and there's there's where the brake switch for the brake pedal will go over this I don't know if I get my there it is so if anybody wants to know where the brake switch goes, brake, uh, uh, brake light switch rather. And there's an arm that comes down here. And I'm going to take it off here. I'm going to try to take it off here. If that fails, I'll get it off there. And there's an arm over here that's already been disconnected. It was uh, hooked to the L bracket for the dash. There was a stud... And I showed it to you, the one I couldn't get out. It was a stud with a nut on top. And then the, the stud went through and a, bolt, uh, a nut went on the bottom. So that's that. So this is what we're working on immediately right here in the next few minutes. And get that out of there. So well, there we go that came out pretty easy I was able to bring the the plate from the outside just bring it through the hole that's the one with the uh, brake arm on it I'll keep that as one assembly set that aside um, that bolt uh, over there in the in the transmission tunnel right over there that had that bracket on it that L bracket held in with a 5 8 fine thread Come out easy though, no washer or on it on it. And uh, no washers on these nuts that go to the plate that I brought in from outside. So that's the plate, firewall plate, mount, mounting plate. So what I did find, uh, and I've seen this a couple times now, and I was a little bit thrown off by it. Not thrown off, but after I took the bolts off, I didn't realize that uh, there was a difference. So they, uh, three of these bolts, they all have washers on them. Two had star washers, and you can see where they go, the two star washer ones. But one had this uh, dog's tooth washer on it that went there. I don't know why they wouldn't use the same bolt washer right through I don't know anyway that's what's on this one so now let's go after the uh, I think I got that zoomed in pretty tight there I do yeah <laughs> so now let's go after the event uh, I'll take you in and see what screws are in there I haven't looked at them yet so let's go have a look 
Okay, for this vent, there appears to be three uh, screws that hold it in. They look to be like 5 16 And there's one in the back, I don't know if you like back there. And there's one up here, like I showed you in the front. And then there's one in here. Um, I can't, right there. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a problem getting it out with this brake assembly on there, park brake assembly. But uh, I'm going to try, and if I can't, I'll take the park brake assembly off. They're both kind of conflicting with each other. But I think I can get at the park brake assembly screws. There's two that I can see, one here and one back. And I assume there's probably a third. They're generally, it's a, a triangular fixture. But anyway, I don't know for sure, and I'll, uh, we'll find out soon. So I'm going to go after that. I'm going to try to get this, uh, this vent off first. And if I have to resort to taking that off, you might see me do that. Okay, before I uh, get too far ahead of me, I've got this brake assembly out um, on the floor here. Uh, in that shorts video I did for dash uh, mounts, these are the two bolts that go up into the upper uh, part of the brake mount that I was talking about with the big washers on them. So that's what they look like there. They were easy to get out. Though I think they may have had a, a Loctite on them, a blue Loctite, uh, or a thread locker. I don't say Loctite, but a thread locker, a blue thread locker. So just wanted to point those two out because that was something that wasn't in that shorts. There it is. The uh, vent's out. A lot of goop on that. The brake uh, assembly is off. Park brake assembly is off. Those were a half inch. There were three of them. Um, right there. Uh, there's the dog's tooth. Washer on them. So, a fixed washer on the bolt. They're all the same. And I had a lot of trouble getting on the back. The back side of this, this screw right here, I think I zoomed in again. What am I doing here? All right, back out you go. All right, so that one in the back was tough to get at. I couldn't get on it even with my my flex setup. It just wouldn't stay on it. That's why I ended up taking the park brake assembly out. 
no big deal um, there was a I mentioned there was one clip I had to take the the park brake, brake cable off with it and it was one clip down in there and that was half inch as well so that's all that out now I'm gonna be pulling the uh, uh, before I go into talking about the firewall stuff, I want to talk about this uh, adhesive that's on here. This is like say it stayed really soft. In the Ford manual, and I do have an original Canadian version of the Ford manual for 65 Thunderbird. And it is original, it's not a reproduction. I don't bring it out here because I want to try to keep it clean. But in that manual, there's mention of some of this stuff here some of these uh, um, sealers they had asbestos in them they were and that one looks like it might be it looks like it has kind of strand in it and the way it bonded on probably did too so that's fine uh, handling it without a mask and stuff the way it is right there it's fairly inert I threw this at work uh, we had boilers and stuff to deal with and asbestos is fine as long as it's it's encapsulated and not airborne. So as soon as you start cutting, grinding, or anything with that around, you be, you make it airborne, and it, now it becomes harmful to you. Uh, the way it's sitting there now, it's not going to hurt you. Well, you can lick it and, and try to inhale it, but you have to basically inhale, inhale it. But if you're going to clean that off, if you're going to do any kind of grinding or anything around that area, like uh, with a wire wheel or anything even, you might want to uh, wear a mask. And the same with all these, though this looks to be a different sealer that was up in these dash bolts. I'm thinking because it does look different, it feels different, it probably is the one with asbestos. Anyway, rambling on again, let's get back to the, to the thing at hand. Just be careful around that stuff, that's all I'm saying. Now, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna put a mask on for this. Taking this out, because yeah, I don't like to inhale all those fibers and stuff, but I am going to put a mask on for this, taking that out. Dust really bothers me too. So, And uh, you can see already that they did use some adhesive on this up in the upper part. It looks like basically just a contact cement, that yellow contact cement, but probably that Super 77 3M stuff would be uh, ideal for putting it back on. All right, so let me get a mask and get my uh, body tools or uh, body trim remover tools so I can get those. I think they're rubber. Oh, they're, they're metal. I don't, but I don't know how they're held in there. I'm going to go around the other side and see what holds them in. And maybe they're just not on them. I don't think so. I think they're just pressed in there. So let's have a look. Up in the engine compartment looking at the firewall. And there's one of those retainers for that insulation. So I brought my ball peen hammer as John would say. And I'm just gonna tap them back. And see, I'm just gonna try it. Maybe it won't work, maybe it will. Nope, they're not moving easily anyway. Let's try another one. Uh, there's none really easily to get at from here. Oh, there's one down here. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, see that one pop back through. So maybe there's stuff on this and it's probably hardened right up. Another one over there, let's see if it taps out. Yeah. I can get it started. Another one down there. Yeah. Pop it right out. That one's going back. What else is around here? There's one down in here, let's see what happens. That one's gone. What else do we have? There's a couple over here. Yeah. So basically, I get down in there. Yeah. The ball peen hammer looked after a lot of that. I'm going to look for some more. And then I'm going to tap a little on this one, and then I'll go back inside and get that off. I'll get a mask on and take that all off. I'm going to bag it up and save it. So I don't want to rip it. All right, let's go.
come out pretty easy and uh there's no markings there's no tags or anything on this that i can see uh it's not in that bad of shape really a little bit of rust picked up down there from the floor firewall but overall it's pretty good so probably didn't need the mask on for that but uh hey you never know when you're into it it's easier to get it on to start with and there's the firewall looks pretty sweet more red oxide primer for the most part a couple of splashes of what might be white paint here and there and I want to talk about these clips these are not plastic they are metal they're like a coat button almost in a way I'll show you one that came apart here's one that I uh, had to pull out with the pliers so what they are they're a split so I'll see if I can find those new. Here's what they look like before. There's one, another one broke off too, right? That one was rusted through. So that's how they go in. So it's like a button, like one of those uh, lapel buttons that you'd wear for, you know, whatever. They just go in and they pinch underneath. And there's the button for another one that fell apart. So they are falling apart and they're in bad shape. So we'll get, get some new ones. So let me get this out on the floor and I'm going to try to bag it. I don't really want to fold it, but yeah, I have room to store it full length. But I, what I'm going to do, I think I'll put uh, a stick, a couple of sticks on each, one each side and sandwich it just to hold it. It is shaped, right? So it does have shape to it. So up around where the brake pedal and all that was, it comes out. So. I think if I just support it with a couple of uh, light boards, it'll be fine. All right, and I'll make a decision whether I'll make a decision whether I, I want to reuse it or not. Be nice to have a new one. All right, let me get at her. Okay, one more thing I almost forgot was to deal with this brake uh, assembly. So you saw me put the deep creep on to get the uh, pin out for this U bracket. And also here, so now I've got it, it sat for a bit while I was doing the other work. I pull, you pull that out. I ended up, uh, just a little tip here, going underneath. If it's out on the ground like it is here, just going underneath the tabs and just tapping down on the frame with the ball peen hammer. And then it popped right up out of there. But it won't come through the hole yet because this is on a ball and it needs to come out. So this turns like so and then pops off. Save it. And then this will come right out of, the, out of the housing. And then I can pull it down all through here, taking this clamp off. But I won't bore you with that. That's pretty straightforward stuff. Because, uh, like I said before, the bracket is on the other end, and it's seized on. And I wanted to do it on the bench so I don't damage it. But I can still get the cable out. So let me do that and see how she goes. There she goes, down through the hole. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's just if, if you don't have any reference to it, it's hard to, to deal with. I get that. And I'll put this with the rest of the stuff, so I'll have it. And uh, that's great. Wow, we got a lot done today. Vents out, uh, brake pedal supports, uh, insulation, all out. Great job, guys. Really appreciate you helping me with this. Anyway, I'm going to call it quits uh, on this video um, for now. Not, not call quits on the car. Nope, that ain't happening. That's not happening, sorry. Um, so yeah, like I said a couple times probably already, now we'll work our way back through. 
there's a lot to be done in here. And I was noticing on this side in particular that we have some uh, holes in this inner wheelhouse. And no doubt on the outer wheelhouse. <laughs> so I do have the spare Thunderbird. And uh, before the weather gets really cold, I'm going to have to go out and pull out probably both of these wheelhouses out of the other one. We'll see how it goes because this will be this work will be getting done. That one doesn't look so bad, but this work will be getting done uh, once the body's stripped. And I build this outer panel for reference. That's this will be the one of the first places to go after um, for rust repair. So, yeah, I'm gonna think about it, but I do want to get those uh, wheelhouses out. Before, before it gets really cold. We're supposed to have some nice weather for the next couple weeks, so maybe I'll tackle it. It's not a job I want to do, but hey, I bought the spare car for a reason. All right, guys, thanks for uh, hanging in there and listening to me ramble on about a lot of different things. Uh, I really appreciate the subscribers. I really appreciate all the questions. You know, uh, that's how I learn, too. And I don't mind asking a few questions, and I've had great answers back on the ones I did ask. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one.